DIY. It's a term that's blown up in recent years. Of course, it means do it yourself. There are blogs, TV shows dedicated to this trend. But there's one website that's really bringing it to the forefront. As NBC 15's Lindsay Branwall explains, there are a few things you'll have to look out for before you become a DIYer. That website we're talking about is Pinterest. In case you didn't know, it's a collection of hobbies and interests essentially in a big picture board like this one right here. We have it pulled up for you. It links blogs and articles from gardening to recipes in one place and lots of things to do yourself. But with anyone posting and everyone making it look easy, it does pose some dangers to you. Why buy it when you can make it for yourself? and for far less money. That's the big idea behind DIY. And everything looks like it turns out so well. I'm one to frequent the site too. In fact, I made this day bed with ideas from Pinterest and it required the use of some tools, including a circular saw. It can kick the wood back at you. That's right. The wood can be kicked back at you at a table saw, and that does happen a lot. And table saws uh, are involved in many injuries. You know, there are over 80,000 saw injuries every year, people getting cut for one reason or another. In fact, in 2013, it's estimated 80,915 people had to go to the emergency room after using a saw. As we look at the history of DIY, a boom of DIY articles starts in 2009, but injuries started booming then too. Taking a look at the circular saw again, injuries started jumping after 2009. Not just small injuries, some major injuries that require emergency room attention. John Drangenberg is the consumer safety director at UL, where they test the safety of power tools. So know what you're doing. Take a few seconds to think about safety. People that have never used tools are picking them up when posts make projects look easy. Sometimes when you're looking at, say, a television program that talks about uh, remodeling or reconstructing something or other, uh, they have some experts on there who are using tools who know exactly what they're doing and they can do it very quickly. Dringenberg encourages beginners to become DIYers, but says taking your time is the way to prevent an ER visit. Learn how to do things before you dive into something and then if you're in a hurry, that's where accidents happen. Don't take shortcuts. Maybe grabbing a power tool isn't for you. Pinterest still has a lot to offer, like whitening your teeth which could cost hundreds of dollars professionally. But there may be a $5 solution in your bathroom cabinet. But listen to this. Swap your mouthwash with hydrogen peroxide and swish for a minute. It's not good to go out and try to create your own bleaching. People that have done that that have had some severe burning or blistering on the gums. Dr. Dave Ducommon is a dentist at Madison No Fear Dentistry. He and their whitening guru, hygienist Mike Gartley, have seen it all. I've even had people come in and ask about using real bleach on their teeth. I, in fact, I had a patient that tried that about six years ago, and his results weren't very good. Gartley says this patient suffered some painful and dangerous results. <sighs> While these Pinterest suggestions may damage your mouth, Ducoman says they won't even work. The peroxide that you and I can buy at the drugstore is too low of a percentage to actually permeate the tooth and cause color change, but it's high enough that it will cause damage to your soft tissues. And from the posts we saw, no authors had any dental experience. I don't recommend DIY when it comes to bleaching because who put up the information to do this? and what, how much do they know about dentistry and soft tissues and tooth anatomy. And Ducommon says if you're really looking for a white smile and not a blistered one. How's that feel? Any discomfort at all? Leave this one to the professionals. You want to go with someone who's done the research on what material and how to use the materials safely. As I mentioned in the story, I'm a big DIYer myself and the best advice I can give you is safety. I take the time to think about every cut every drill and a lot of that advice you all also gave to us and we wrote it all down for you. You can see a list of recommendations for beginners and a good refresher for any DIYer on our website, NBC15.com. Just click on this story.